Hello, everyone, and welcome to ID8 Style Manager Fundamental Training. Uh, my name is Glennis Patterson. I am the Director of Software Development. I'm speaking to you today from New Jersey. Our company is based out of San Francisco and has customers uh, worldwide. The goal of this class, which is a 30-minute class, is uh, we're going to be talking about ID8 Style Manager for Revit, which is our brand new product uh, offering from ID8 Software. And we're going to be covering a couple key points. We're going to first talk about how to assess the risk of Revit line style deletions um, using the Analyze function within ID8 Style Manager. Then we're going to talk about how to use ID8 Style Manager to fix and standardize your Revit materials using the merge function. We'll cover how to manage duplicate styles with Style Manager. And lastly, we'll show how to delete unused object styles, including CAD imports. So let's get dig right in. Uh, I'm going to start by just giving you a quick overview of uh, the user interface within Style Manager. Uh, when you launch this solution, you'll notice uh, on the left-hand side here, we've got uh, our home panel and access to the Getting Started Guide, which I, I highly recommend that you take a look at the Getting Started Guide. There's some nice exercise in there that you could use to, to learn a little bit more. On the right-hand side, you'll be able to access our online help as well. Um, Style Manager is actually a collection of nine different tools. They have a lot of overlap in terms of how they function, uh, but as I scroll through here and, and showcase each one, you'll see that, that by and large they're, they're pretty similar in terms of the information that we're presenting and the tool set that you'll be able to use to manage those. So as we take a look just at the user interface and, and how to use Style Manager, I'm going to use fill patterns as an example. Um, and we'll begin by making sure we're, we're displaying everything. Um, and we, we see a list of, in this case, all of the fill patterns in the project. And we can use our search text box to reduce that uh, based on a text search using the word sand here. And we can see that there are three patterns in all in the project that use the word sand. Um, once you have your list in front of you of the ones that you want to look at, uh, the next step is typically that you're going to use the analyze button, the analyze function. And the purpose of this, as we'll see here, is we're going to be querying Revit and, and illuminating sort of exactly how each of these styles is being used in the project. So in this case, these two fill patterns, um, each one is being used in a material. Um, and on the right-hand side, you see that usage. Uh, this dense pattern is used in this tan material, and you can access the, the Edit Materials button when you pick that material on the right-hand side. And that button's going to change kind of depending upon the usage. So you can use the Analyze button. You can also double-click, as I've just done here, uh, to see how each fill pattern is being used. So in this case, this fill pattern is used also in a family. And you'll notice that the button now says edit family when I select that particular usage. So this is used in six different ways within the current project. Uh, you can also right click on any of the styles and use it as a way to rename. So here, if I remove that part of the name, uh, you'll see it disappear. That's because I'm still filtering based on the word sand. So it's, it hasn't gone away, it just isn't being displayed right now. And in this case, now we have two patterns that seem kind of similar to me. You know, they, they have similar names, um, but now we can take a look uh, at a, another great feature of ID8 Style Manager, which is actually something that's true of a lot of ID8 software solutions, which is I can interoperate with the Revit environment while Style Manager is open. So here, you know, I can use the, the fill pattern tool within Revit to, to look a little deeper and decide uh, which one of these, uh, it, or whether I want to keep them both or whether I want to merge them. Um, in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the dense one. I like that one better. Um, and I'm going to move all the ones that are currently in stand. I'm going to merge those two by selecting them both here and then selecting a target fill pattern and then the merge button. So what Style Manager is doing in the background is documented here. Uh, and it depends on sort of the usage. But you can see here for each one of the usages, we're, we're doing something different. Um, 
and we're in some cases actually opening up the family in the background to make that change. And so the result here is we see that the seven usages of that merged style. So now, uh, now that we've covered sort of the basic buttons, uh, I want to review the check boxes that we have along the top here. Uh, this first one that I'm checking is, it says not analyzed, and you can see as we toggle it on and off, um, it shows me the ones that are analyzed or not analyzed. If a style is not analyzed yet, you'll get that question mark, and you'll notice that the merge and delete buttons are not available. You, you can rename it, but the merge and delete won't be available. So it's useful sometimes to be able to filter on whether something is analyzed or not. Here I'm just going to double click and review a couple other fill patterns and again I can I can multi-select a bunch of them. I, I typically don't recommend you doing them all at once because some of them can be slow um, and again when we use these check boxes we can get very quickly to look at the, only the ones that are uh, not used and then that makes it really easy to batch select them and to delete them as we've just done there. The last checkbox, uh, which applies here to fill patterns and line patterns and filters, is called isolate duplicates. And this is just a uh, way in which you can aggregate and look only at the items that are uh, that we're considering to be duplicates. So in this example, we're talking about fill patterns, and we're talking about um, you know whether that definition of the fill pattern is identical or not. Um, so we have these two in yellow, for example, they're both in use, but they, they actually have the exact same fill pattern and, you know, probably, you know, you don't want to do that either. There may be some reasons, we'll have to make that decision here, um, but I don't want the top one, the Gips puts one, and so I would use that as a way of um, reviewing and then, in this case, merging them to, to clean up and get rid of that one, which is, is a duplicate. So those are just some of the basic features and functions that are available within fill patterns, and we'll see that um, the other tools, if you will, are, are going to be very similar. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's dig into sort of our first real common workflow. Actually, let, this was a good reminder for me. I did want to do a quick little poll. So let me see if I can get this pulled up here. Uh, so the question is, which of these Revit styles is just fun? I won't know who's, who signed which ones up. You can pick more than one, but my question is, which one of these can be deleted without, uh, even when they are in use? Does anybody know the answer? Be brave. Give you a couple minutes here. I have to say that as we develop this tool, as always, I, I always learn something new whenever we do, whenever we develop a new product, and I was um, a little bit surprised uh, at the answer to this question myself. So I'll give you a few more minutes here while we let everybody vote. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close that, and then I can share the results. Okay, and so um, as you can see here, uh, a lot of people thought that all of these could be deleted uh, even though they are in use. And that is um, by and large true. Um, and that's really the, the reason we need Style Manager is that uh, that's a problem. Uh, the only one where this is actually sort of not true is for materials, if you're using Purge, um, it will only let you remove the ones that are not in use. Uh, however, the material browser itself will let you delete ones that are in use. So keep that in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and move on now. So the first thing I said we were going to take a look at was you know, how is Style Manager um, going to help us make smart decisions? It's, a, it's the highest and best use, I think, of Style Manager is this sort of risk, risk assessment usage, right? We want to know when we delete something, uh, if it's going to impact the project or not, right? And so the first example we're going to look at is we're going to talk about line styles now. And we're just going to look at, you know, how does Style Manager uh, report back to us information about line styles? So here we see the first line. We're going to double click here on this lines two, and we can see on the right the usage. You know, we see it's a red line, it's solid, um, and it's used in lines. 
this other line style here is actually used in a lot of different ways, maybe some unexpected ways. We've got view templates, we've got line work in views, and we also have here a detailed filled region is using that line work. So we can select that filled region and then use the show button to zoom and open up a view where we can actually look at it. It will be selected so we can again interoperate with Revit here and edit the boundary. And you can see here that boundary is using that line style. Um, you know, if we delete that line style, maybe that was a, you know, it was red or fat uh, weight, you know, that would be impacting uh, the result of our, of our documentation if we removed it. So we, we want to be very careful with the usage of that. All right, so analyzing and assessing risk with Style Manager is, is a great thing to do and has a lot of value. Uh, we're also now going to talk about not only analyzing these things, but also fixing things. So when we talk about fixing and, and standardizing our styles, uh, the example I'm going to use here is materials. And the goal here is I want to take a bunch of materials that, uh, again, are kind of similar um, or maybe identical even in terms of how they're graphically representing, but have different names. You know, they've come into the project in lots of different ways, and I need to prevent that from happening. So let's take a look at that now. Before we begin, we'll talk, uh, we'll just take a quick look at the material browser. And as I said earlier, uh, you can, in fact, from the material browser environment, delete something that's in use. So if I hit that delete button there, you'll see on the left hand side that that fill pattern uh, or that you know, material just deleted and the fill pattern disappeared from that view. So with Style Manager, it's a very different sort of proposition. We can again sort of use a text search for concrete and find all the materials that have the word concrete in them. You can then um, sort the usage, the number field there, um, showing the ones that are most in use at the top. And then for each material, uh, you can on the right hand side review the usage. So this particular one, you know, it's used in lots of different element types. We've got this floor and you can see that this floor actually is using this in one of the layers. And actually, if you look carefully at the information pane here, we're actually telling you, you know, which layer it's being referenced in. So we're giving you a lot of good information uh, to sort of forensically analyze these things. So once we've sort of had a t an opportunity to, to analyze and review the usages, we can make some educated decisions about whether we want to merge. So in this case, all three of these are really something that, that I feel are similar, and I'm going to take all of them and merge them into my standard one, which doesn't have the comma in the name and doesn't have the multiple dashes. And you can see here again, here's an example of all the things that, that we're doing for you in the background. We're, so we're batch sort of processing this content, whether it's a family in the project or a family that's um, a custom family that's a loadable family. Um, and we'll be able to then aggregate them all and get you back on course with your materials. Okay, the last example that I wanted to, to sh talk about and show you is one that's extremely common request that we get uh, that relates to imported object styles. So there's object styles, you know, we think of the model object styles or the annotation object styles. Those are also managed by uh, the style manager, but the, the imported object styles always seem to create a lot of problems uh, that we need to definitely take, uh, take care of sooner rather than later. So the question that we always get is, you know, hey, I, I need to get rid of all the stuff or most of the stuff that's displaying here in this tab, the imported object style. So let's take a look at how we can find, review, and then delete those um, even when it's not possible to delete them uh, from the object style dialog. Okay, so first again the object styles dialog. Here's the tabs that you can look at and again all of the things on all of these tabs are managed by objects uh, by the style manager. Um, so we'll go ahead and launch that and you'll notice here, when we're looking at object styles, there are some additional checkboxes, um, and you can see that we can we can uncheck object styles so that we're only looking at the imported ones. You'll also notice that uh, when we're looking at imported styles, if it's a CAD import, 
Um, there'll be a parent style, which is in bold, uh, and then there's the subcategories underneath it. So the toilet layout's another example here where the parent's at the top. Um, and typically my, you know, I would recommend that if you're analyzing these, just pick the parent itself, uh, because if the parent's not in use, then obviously the subcategories um, don't need to be reviewed either. But in this particular example, uh, that is a actually an exploded CAD instance that was probably a block, um, so it became its own um, CAD import. It's got that terrible long name there. And you can use here, for the instance, you can use the show button. And it's going to find and open up a view where you can take a look at that particular item. And of course, you know, what is the action item here? You know, the action item could be that you replace it with another family. Um, you could also, frankly, explode it. I typically wouldn't have recommended that in the past, but because we have Style Manager, we don't have to be afraid of that anymore. Uh, you know, we can explode it and we can clean up very quickly the styles, the patterns, uh, the fill patterns, the line patterns that might be a result of that um, explode action. And so, the, you know, the, if we did explode it, it would become lines um, that we could manage. Uh, in addition to those imports, um, you know, the actual CAD import, you're going to also see these imports in families. And these, uh, if you're not aware, you know, these are the ones where there is a family in your project that in turn has CAD import data in it. Um, and those are particularly evil uh, and we want to track them down and squash them probably uh, because they're just going to keep like a virus they're just going to keep infecting our projects if if we don't take care of it so here we can see you know for example there's um there's a style um, and called uh, bmcd and it's in this family called presentation desk uh, then within the family you'll notice style managers working in the family here there's another family so this is a nested family that's using uh, or referencing um, some of the object styles here. So here we finally get to the root of the, the issue and there's a 3D element that is, again, if we can use the show button, we can see that that import symbol is using that subcategory. So we could manually sort of fix this family in this context um, and that might be appropriate if you're, if you're trying to just clean up families. But if you're working in a project and you want to batch process that action um, you can certainly do that as well and, and I think that's off, often very useful to be able to do that so let's go ahead and just sort of see what that looks like so here we have two different important families the first one zero it's actually used in two different families and then the the BMCD2 is used in in one family so we're going to pick them both and we're going to merge them not into any of those subcategories, but we're going to we're going to basically merge them all the way to the top here to imports and families. That's the built-in parent um, object style for imports. Um, so that's kind of the highest level you can go to. And I typically like to use sort of a, a lighter line for those um, for the rare instances where I do have DWG content. You can see the change here. So we've, again, that's batch process. That's fixed. Not only that one family, but the nested family within it was taken care of by that process. And we're left here with some items that aren't in use at all. And we can just grab them all and select the delete button to get rid of them and move, move, move on. All right, so those were three real common workflows that you're, you're I'm sure, going to be delighted with when you give it a try. Um, wanted to give you a few tips for working with Style Manager that I think are important. The first tip is real basic. It's really just, you know, why not purge before you take this on? Um, there are, can be things in this example. The DWG family here is not in use. Purge is telling me it's not in use. Um, and it's it's kind of hard to find these because they're they're just randomly or not randomly but they're alphabetically listed and not listed by a sort of a category but look for those you know get rid of them if you can um, before you do style manager just to save you some time I mean style manager can also find and track those down but it's kind of nice to just be able to do it here um, and then also to purge after you're done as well the the next tip is I think probably obvious but I, I want to state it um, if you are doing using Style Manager in a project, uh, which is definitely something we, we think you should do, uh, you do want to make sure that if you're in a work shared project that you're working carefully. And so by that we mean, you know, you probably, if you're fixing a lot of things, you, you know, you probably want to 
not have a lot of other people in that project. Some of these items can be used in lots and lots of families, and so we have to touch all of those families to make those fixes. So, you know, it, we, we're not going to fail, but we're not going to be able to complete all the actions if they're in use by others at that point in time. So consider, you know, getting everybody out of the project before you do that. Another really important tip, and this is something that our beta testers helped us identify kind of early on. This product, by the way, has been in development for about a year. We had a lot of great um, customer feedback on this. Um, and one of the things we all discovered together is that there are certain line patterns and fill patterns in particular that are used in, in all of the sort of out of the box content. And for that reason, they have really high usages and they will take longer to analyze. Um, the more something is used, the longer it will take to analyze because we basically have to open up stuff and look in the background. So dash dot in particular is a line pattern that is used everywhere. Um, you can try to merge that into other ones and it, it'll, it'll work, it's just going to take a really, really long time and you're going to keep seeing it because Revit is using that sort of in a lot of different ways. So uh, just bear that in mind. If you don't need to deal with that one, don't don't analyze it basically. Uh, and then likewise with fill patterns, diagonal crosshatch is used everywhere. So um, maybe just uh, accept it for what it is. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, what is the risk of not using something like Style Manager? I think the, the, the thing we need to remember is that without this kind of tool, what we're doing is we're making, you know, we're sort of crossing our, our fingers and hoping for the best as we make, uh, you know, as, as we try to clean up things. So Style Manager removes that guessing, removes the sort of uh, wishful thinking and makes it very clear what the ramification of any change might be. So uh, if you'd like, you can download and give this a try. Uh, the trial version of this is a 14-day trial. Um, it will work uh, as a full functioning for use with materials and material appearance assets. So you can give those a whirl. Uh, and I would recommend that you use the Getting Started Guide in conjunction with your trial. It's the, the exercise in this, the Getting Started Guide is set up to work specifically with the material examples. Um, and if you have any questions, you can just contact us at support at id8software.com. We'd be happy to, to answer your questions. Um, so today we've covered a couple of these key workflows mentioned here. Uh, hopefully you found that sort of intriguing and, and want to give it a try. Uh, and thank you very much. Uh, Richard, I'm, I want to turn it over to you. Do we have any questions from the audience that we, we should tackle? Uh, yeah, we do have one quick question. And first, I want to mention to people that if you do have questions, you can go to the, the question panel and type that in, and we'll address those as best as we can. So you've, you showed, Glynis, a lot of, um, uh, with Style Manager, a lot of the functionality where it's opening up the families in the background, and it's making the changes, mm -hmm. and it's cleaning them up. Now, mm -hmm. is that just the project, or is that being saved to, let's say, my central repository on the network where I might have all of my family content? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Richard. Um, the uh, Let me go ahead and launch it here. When you're working in a project environment, um, you are, let me go ahead and we'll go back to, um, we'll go fill patterns here, and we'll pick a couple of these here. I'll analyze them while we're talking so you can see. Um, you know, if they're used in a family, these are probably all materials. Um, then what we're doing is we are um, opening up the family from the project environment and we're making the change in that sort of temporary version of the family and then we're loading it back into the project and not saving not saving that to disk. So if you're working in the project environment, you're creating a clean copy of the family that lives within the project. Um, you can obviously then, you know, go to your to your project browser and you can save that content out. I'm sure a lot of you know sort of how to do that if you if that's the way you want to work. Um, Otherwise, you can also use Style Manager just by opening the family file itself. So if you're interested in cleaning up, you know, one at a time, you could open up a family file and then save it back to disk. Thank you. Anything else? Excellent answer. Uh, in your poll, you asked people about um, 
being able to delete object styles, line styles, patterns, and that is obviously available within Revit, but there are some things that you can't delete that are sort of Revit system level um, objects. Um, mm -hmm. is, that, uh, is that shown somewhere here? Uh, yes. Uh, great question. Uh, you'll notice as I as I click on each one of these things, some of these tools have a, a checkbox that we didn't talk about, which is it's you'll see here with line styles, for example, uh, built in. And you can see with the line styles that the built in ones, if I uncheck them, um, the built in ones are the ones that are italicized. Um, and so if you're on a built in one, uh, for the line styles, as an example, um, let me pick center line here. I'll, I'll double click and I'll analyze that. Um, and we can see here that you know this is used um, in only one place in this entire project. Um, but you'll notice I can merge that into a different style, but I can't delete it. So it, ha it does have a little bit of a unique behavior. Um, and I think the other ones that have built-ins, fill patterns have uh, built-ins, but it's really just solid. Um, and then within object styles, you'll notice we do have a built-in checkbox, but it's not checked by default. And the reason is that, you know, there's a lot of built-in styles. You can see here, you know, adaptive points as an example up top here. They might, you know, they might not even be in use in this project. So the purpose of showing the built-in lines, here's a great example. Um, or excuse me, built-in object styles. You know, there is under detail items, you know, somebody's made, I'm gonna go ahead and do this, I'll probably regret it. Oh, there we go. Um, if, you, if you pick, as I said earlier, if you pick a style that's used heavily, you know, it might take a minute to find all the families uh, over here on the right, but in this case, there's just one, so it's very quick. Um, but we can see here, you know, this one's called hidden, but there actually is a built-in one called hidden lines. And so the value of, of being able to display them is sort of to recognize that, hey, you know what, maybe that's a bad choice. Maybe that one really should have been on the hidden lines. And so in that case, you would just pick it and you would say, yeah, you know what, I do want the, the built-in version rather than the custom version. So that's, that's what uh, we decided, that's how we decided to kind of flag those with the italics. Thank you. Um, also, uh, there's a question about um, if you're interested in purchasing or maybe have more questions, and I think you showed that, Glennis, right, that you would send an email to support at id8software.com? Uh, yes, that, that's definitely, and I'll, I'll bring up the website, uh, let's see, I think I have, yeah, here we go. So on our website, um, there's a couple key things, you know, there is the subscribe now, you could, um, you could come here and get sort of an overview of pricing for Style Manager or any of our products by going to the purchase link here. Um, if you want to do the trial, you just come here and download it from from this area, and then if you want to you know, read more about how to use Style Manager or look at some other videos, um, you could access them here. The, the help file, as with all of our products, it's pretty extensive um, in terms of how to use it, but also um, we, we always have kind of a how-to section where some workflows are documented. And this is a section because this is a new product, you know, this is um, just got a couple of things in here, but as we get sort of recurring questions from people, we'll probably flesh this out with, with even more great, great information. Thank you so much, Glennis. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.